Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming out on this chilly Canberra winter's afternoon uh, to our nice warm museum and gallery. My name's Shane Brainard. I'm the director of Canberra Museum and Gallery and also of three historic homes, Lanyon, Calthorpe's House and Mugga Mugga. Welcome today. Um, we're very honoured to have our exhibition curator, Dr Sophie McIntyre, who will provide a brief introduction to the exhibition for us today, and three of the exhibiting artists who are heading um, north, <laughs> back home uh, Sunday. We have uh, Peng Hongzhu, uh, whose work you're in front of now, who will speak to us about his work. Uh, we have uh, Julie, who's not an artist, uh, she's studying actually. She is an artist. Yeah. She's uh, stuttering, studying for a doctorate at the ANU at the moment, but she's not exhibiting here. She's helping us today with translation if we need it. Um, we also have Cindy Ng, uh, over here, uh, whose work is behind me here. She'll uh, speak to us uh, following Peng Hang Zhe. And we also have Ni Yo Yu uh, with us today, uh, whose work is on the wall behind us here. So it's, it's a real treat for us. Um, when Sophie approached Canberra Museum and Gallery with the concept of this exhibition, um, I was aware that uh, we hadn't really done very much around contemporary Asian art and this was a wonderful opportunity for us um, to provide a way for uh, people in our region to become more literate in what is going on in this area and also s to speak to people who have a cultural background from this region um, and provide something for those audiences amongst us. Um, Sophie will provide a floor talk which will look at the exhibition in more detail overall, if you like, on the 5th of August. And we have a family event coming up this Friday which looks at uh, the tradition of ink painting and the techniques of ink painting. You can find out about our whole program in our calendar which is available from the front desk. Um, and you can even pre-order a catalogue to this exhibition which uh, will be arriving later next week. Um, I think that's pretty much all I need to say. I'll introduce Sophie. Uh, Sophie has, is an Asian art specialist. She's worked as a curator and director in two university art museums. She completed her doctorate in the field in 2013 at the Australian National University. And I'll pass to her to introduce the exhibition to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shane, and thanks very much for coming today. Um, so I'm just going to give you a very brief overview of the exhibition. Um, I'm not sure if many of you were here last night or on Wednesday night uh, where we gave a little bit of an introduction, but um, if you were, just please bear with me because uh, some of you may not have been there. Um, and then I'm going to introduce uh, each of the artists. They're going to speak for about 15 minutes each and then there'll be about five, ten minutes um, time for questions if you have any. Um, it is meant to be sort of a conversation. I think the artists would like to hear as much from you. Um, so please don't hold back in asking any questions. So this exhibition, Ink Remix, um, Contemporary Art from Mainland China, Taiwan and Hong Kong, um, it's responding to a, a recent trend or phenomenon, if you like, um, that's uh, developing in uh, this region, in Hong Kong, uh, China and Taiwan, where artists, um, and particularly a younger generation of artists, are looking to the past and seeking to um, reinterpret the Chinese ink tradition. Um, I should emphasise that this exhibition isn't looking at the medium of ink per se. Um, there's only about three artists in the exhibition who are actually using ink in the traditional Chinese um, context in terms of br using the brush, ink on paper. The majority of artists are actually working in a wide range of um, media, including video as you see here, as well as biro, Coca-Cola, lithographic prints. So it really is quite diverse in terms of the media and also stylistically, I think you can see um, artists um, using a, a range of styles. So I think these artists really don't see themselves as um, uh, creating works that are about continuing 
uh, the Chinese ink tradition. They really see themselves as, uh, I guess, drawing on that, appropriating it in a very postmodernist context sometimes, and reinterpreting it, sometimes parroting it and subverting it. And I think um, we're going to have Peng Hongzhi speaking first um, about his work here, and also there's two other works of his um, on this wall here. Um, the show is um, loosely um, uh, grouped according to five themes. Um, uh, landscape, so when you walk through the door, you enter into, um, a num there's a number of works that are exploring the landscape from a, a variety of perspectives, both in terms of the natural landscape as well as the built uh, landscape and the changing nature of that landscape, as most people would know. In China, especially in the last uh, 15, 20 years, massive changes that have been happening, um, uh, not just economically, but uh, the uh, growth of urbanisation, industrialisation, having a major impact on, on the landscape. Um, the then you walk into um, the middle room, which uh, works looking at um, history, uh, with Chen Xiaoxiong's um, uh, very engaging work entitled Ink History, as well as uh, themes relating to the body and to gender. Um, in this room, we're looking more at religion um, from a, a range of perspectives. This, ha this room happens to have, where we're sitting here, two artists from Taiwan. Um, but looking at religion, uh, uh, Pan Xinhua's work um, here, uh, Peng Hongzhi's here, looking at um, uh, aspects of Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism and then a world religion. So as Peng Hongzhi will um, explain, his works are really looking at religion from a, I guess, a, a, a universal perspective, looking more at the meaning of tradition today in contemporary society. Um, and I think there is this, a, 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 it's a sort of a, a bleak commentary on the rise of religious fundamentalism as well around the world. Um, and then we move into the room here, which we'll, we will physically move into with Cindy and, and uh, Niyoyu's work, looking at, uh, I guess, more metaphysical, uh, spiritual uh, issues. So this is the room of, I guess, contemplation, if there, if there is one, uh, in the exhibition. So I think um, we might just move straight into uh, introducing Peng Hongzhi now. Would you like to come, come over? Um, so Peng Hongzhi um, is uh, based in Taipei, uh, lives, has lived in Beijing as well, um, and he's, he's become known, f whether, <laughs> whether he likes it or not, uh, as the dog artist. He's done a series of, of videos based on dogs. Uh, since the early 1990s and uh, there was a, a wonderful um, video that I saw in the in the mid 1990s I think called Xiao Bai uh, which was actually um, Xiao Bai was his dog who's unfortunately no longer with us but um, he attached a, a camera on top of his uh, Xiao Bai's head um, and it was a it was a very small camera and Xiao, and we 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 actually literally walked through the streets of Taipei. So, um, you know, the, 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 the images were coming from, the, cam from the, the camera on the dog's head. So it's a rather whimsical, um, I guess, exploration of um, urbanisation in Taipei. And um, Peng has also often worked with um, mixed breed dogs and there's again a, a, a sort of comment on uh, Taiwan's identity which I'm not sure how much you know about Taiwan's history but it has been um, a bastion of foreign colonisation from the uh, uh, Portuguese to the Spanish, the Dutch, the Japanese and then finally the mainland Chinese who retreated to Taiwan in 1949. So Taiwan's identity is a very uh, mixed one, hybrid if you like, um, and um, uh, I think 
uh, that particular video, I think, really captures that. These are more recent works um, that Peng, Hong, Peng Hongzhi has created, um, where he's looking at, as I mentioned, religion. And this is called the Taoist, um, ta excerpts from the Taoist Talisman, where he's looking at the Tao Te Ching, the famous um, uh, text on, on Taoism, one of the oldest Chinese texts. Um, and I'm not going to go into the talking about the process, because Hongzhi will, will um, elaborate on that. Um, so now Peng actually does work across media. He's now producing a range of um, paintings, which I was very fortunate to see a few months ago in Taipei, um, and which is also uh, drawing on uh, Taoist ideas as well, and he may speak a little bit more about that. So I think we might pass it over to, to Peng Hongzhi. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, I will. Uh, uh, so, from the beginning of this serious work, it's actually after graduation, my first, one of my first series of work. I, I work with Doc. Uh, from the beginning, uh, after graduation, actually my major was painting all, all the time. Uh -huh. But my school, uh, I studied in, I mean, after graduate school, as my, my graduate school, I studied in San Francisco Art Institute. Uh, but although my major was painting, but like I never finished one painting in school. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> so after the school, and then I think maybe going back to Taipei is, is quite a good idea because everything is developing kind of very exciting and a lot of space, a lot of experimental space. And I work with IT Park, which is an artist wrong. Uh, non-profit space. Uh, so first time I have a sh solo show there and then the first, the beginning worry was I, uh, I work, the idea, the con main concept was about Taiwanese identity. And so I use a symbol like toys, like which made in Taiwan a lot and then spread out all the world. And then so I use the toys kind of represent the Taiwan, because the big quantity, there's a lot of that. And then so I, one of the major work of that series is I build a, a really huge uh, puppy, uh, like four meters high, eight meters long. But on the surface, it's all made of the small toys. And when, when people approach the gallery, and it's about 3,500 3, dogs, and when when audience go into the, the gallery and all the dog bark together. Uh -huh. so, so this my idea about the toy, because the toy has no uh, specific identity on the surface. Uh, it's kind of like mixed with Disney uh, dimension, but the body is kind of like uh, uh, dark home, like the oh, like glass Sausage. Yes, sausage yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's very strange. It looks like uh, you don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> yeah, so, and then I was thinking about making a video. Uh, sometimes I think it's just uh, about doing something new, experiment. And then my aunt's dog, Xiaobai, <laughs> passing by. So, oh. Interesting. So maybe, maybe what's the dog's view of human society? It was uh, in 1999. So I do a video, uh, install the camera uh, on Xiaobai, and then we walk uh, uh, on the street. Uh, yeah, because on the street also there's a lot of street dogs. Uh, so they, they actually react. Uh, they smell and they fight. Uh, uh, so, so that's kind of interesting beginning for me, and then, and then I thinking about dog, and also the idea like Buddhist idea about reincarnation. Uh, so a lot of people saying, uh, your your past life, your next life could be a uh, animal or insect. So, okay, then Xiao Bai must be some human before. 
<laughs> Actually, when you have a strong relationship with Star, you you kind of have this kind of feeling. Yeah, he must be something beyond the dog. <laughs> this must be something there. <laughs> so very interesting for me. And then I do almost ten years work with dog a lot. <laughs> and after Xiao Bai, I make uh, five sculptures, <laughs> kind of interactive sculpture. So how to interact with sculpture? And then I use video. So maybe the dog open the mouth inside. There's a video, and so people have to approach, like put your head inside the mouth, <laughs> so you see the video, and you also squat down, so so you become the dog, <laughs> and so that's kind of interesting for me when when audience kind of react to the sculpture and become the sculpture too, and the reward is to see the video, <laughs> so and and so. Uh, continue work uh, like several words, and then this series uh, start from 2004. Uh, after my residency in New York, uh, which is like after 911. Uh -huh. So I've been to New York before, but I think after 911, it really changed a lot. Uh, it's kind of a turning point about uh, American descent. So, and thinking about this, I think uh, the conflicts, like uh, civil, uh, different cultural conflicts and civil conflicts, still, and I didn't realize, still religions very important part because they don't understand each other. They don't uh, like trying to. Huh? They don't even try. Like, and so. That's very in interesting for me. So I do some study on religious comparison. Uh, and so this series actually, it's all about different religions. Uh, and this talk, uh, Yuki, uh, uh, like uh, work with this series a lot. It's only this talk. Uh, and he is writing all different religions, like uh, there's uh, 11 monitors, 11 films. <laughs> it takes uh, five years to finish. <laughs> also, it's, it's a bit slow because I have to study, like to choose what language and what, what text. <laughs> and it's already related to different writings. Uh, there's uh, Arabic, there's uh, Sanskrit. <laughs> Many different, different words, <laughs> and so, so then I start beginning with uh, Taoist, Taoist text beginning, <laughs> and then also, be also trying to show some uh, human presumption, um, different culture. <laughs> so then I write. Uh, 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 Holy Bible, uh, uh, the Holy Bible, uh, and Holy Bible in English because the most uh, the most translation of Holy Bible is in English, and then and then I play kind of human presumption about the Islamism, uh, so there's a a text in Arabic uh, and. But actually, the text itself is from Bible, huh. and so people, when the people say, uh, look at the Arabic text, and then they saw, oh, this is uh, the uh, Quran, huh. but actually, it is not. Huh. So I think that's kind of very interesting about the the how the presumption about like different culture and what they. Uh, label, how they label uh, like each other, huh. and so anyway, it takes like uh, o almost five years to finish this. And this one is uh, spe uh, especially for for the dog itself, huh, because uh, the dog is uh, about 
like lower creature, uh, we think, uh, what we think, but it, actually it could be not. Uh. And the text is uh, the talisman. Talisman is like uh, uh, the priest uh, writing uh, in the name of God. <laughs> the priest is like a media, right? And then he's writing according like some spirits uh, like you cannot see and then go through his body and then he writing the text. <laughs> so for me, uh, this one's like uh, the center, the human position. <laughs> and so like no human in this, and it's like a dog uh, go through the higher, higher hierarchy. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting, huh? like dog writing God's word. Huh? Yeah, and uh, so, okay, we, ca we can talk a little bit about the, the how the, the video was made. Uh, all the text was made of food, huh? uh, dog food. We, I mean, uh, make a powder of the dog food, uh -huh, dry food, and then write uh -huh, on the wall. So the dog actually just uh, eat, uh, like very basic uh, desire of just eat, you have to eat. And the dog, when the, they eat in time, and then they finish eating. Uh, and Yuki is very good and in, in this. Uh, and she, and he always finished. Uh, <laughs> I think from the beginning, uh, I asked him because he's kind of hung, hung, hunger and then to eat. But a couple of times, after a couple of times, a uh, dog could be trained. Uh, and he was trained to finish the video. Uh, yeah. And I can find out after he finished eating, he looked at me. It's good, good, okay, <laughs> really. <laughs> uh, so, so I think this very, uh, and also when they eat, the videos like uh, taking the process of, of the word, the words on the wall and then disappear, uh, and cons like being consumed. Uh, and, and we rewind it, uh, so the word back to the wall. So it looks like dogs writing with the tongue, uh, his brush, uh, nature brush. <laughs> mm. And Yuki is a, a mixed dog, mongrel. And mongrel is very special, I think. <laughs> this is some fact about mongrel. Uh, is the dog, uh, you, if you buy a dog, uh, like catalog, all different kind of dog. Huh. But they're talking only about pure breed. Huh. There's no mongrel. But mongrel is the biggest quantity uh, in the world. So it's very, I think this fact is also very interesting for me. And also mongrel, I, I think mongrel stronger relationship because he was adopted from the street. Huh. And they, they, I think somehow you feel they appreciate that. Uh, yeah, somehow you can, you can kind of, the feeling about relation, the relationship. Uh, and am I talking too long? No? Yeah. Uh, okay. And, okay, and after, yeah, actually Yuki passed away already. Huh? Uh, but I think after this project, Yuki uh, become a deity. <laughs> Everybody watching Yuki <laughs> writing the God's text. <laughs> I think he's very happy. <laughs> uh, uh, so after this, and I, I finished the dog series. <laughs> and, and then I do some work uh, about the uh, social, some social and cultural conflicts. Uh, yeah, uh, w there's a video called 200 Years." Uh, it was uh, it was 
it was a video uh, from the uh, 70s. <laughs> Uh, talking about American policy and country music, and there's a cowboy singing 200 years, like uh, American has drunk another 200 years. Uh, and this time also, I moved to, after New York, I moved to Beijing. Uh, so uh, very interesting for me for the ideology of a strong big country, uh, being proud of like strong. So, and also this poetry artist, <laughs> yeah, and they share together. <laughs> so interesting, and I translate to uh, Chinese <laughs> the the lyric, but putting a little bit uh, Red Army history, and and then uh, the one friend, uh, a folk singer, and then we make a new video of it. A, a different version of 200 years. Uh, and after that, and also Sophie mentioned, uh, I do s some paintings now. <laughs> and then I found out actually, uh, I do a lot of different kind of work, but I think Taoist is, is the center of the, my idea of all the works. Uh, yeah, after my, so, Continuously, my words trying to make this kind of circle clear, uh, clear, cl like clarify this. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. Shishini, <laughs> thank you, Hongzhi. Um, does anyone have any questions at all? Can I just ask, did the dog eat the food in any particular order? Because it looks as though he's doing it in a particular order. Did you, I don't know, put more food in one place that would make him start there? Or was it just random, the way in which he ate the food? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, not really special arrangement about where to begin. Huh? But because... Uh, the dog, when we see this, is, it was already rewind. <laughs> so uh, the finished part is very clear. So, so you see the dog uh, like, like uh, going out <laughs> and then the the hair going out. <laughs> That's uh, the ending point. Actually, it was a starting point. <laughs> the dog approaching the food. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she when they approach they eat like this way <laughs> oh this one it was it was uh, shooting it was for uh, not vertical it was horizontal uh, and then I remove it to verti vertical uh, so it so the dog eat like this and and beginning it here and back and that yeah usually two times <laughs> yeah and then and then uh, when we re rewind it, and he kind of paying respect and <laughs> out. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's kind of very smooth. <laughs> you you ma always make smooth. <laughs> yeah, once if he continue, I finish or almost finish. That's good. <laughs> Usually, uh, almost ninety percent uh, Yuki finish the job. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry dog. Um, anyone else have any questions? No. Um, I have one for you, Hongzhi. As you said, um, Taoism is quite central theme in many of your works. What is it about Taoism that inspires you to return r regularly to this to this uh, theme and to the philosophy? Yeah. Uh, so. That's it. Taoism, main idea is Tai Chi, right? Yeah. Tai Chi was born on uh, one, one is, and then two, huh. yeah. So, and then three, and then and more, huh. and the uh, A diagram, and then become Yi Qing, huh. yeah. So, the beginning was one, uh -huh. and then also the idea uh, is kind of making circle when the Yi Qing first diagram went to the 
64s and then going back again. <laughs> so it's kind of about chan changes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. And your position is changing too. Uh, and then I like this idea and this kind of uh, could and then could kind of somehow a uh, 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 possibility to appreciate uh, opposite. Uh, uh, so this is uh, this is very interesting for me and also about changing because the universe is changing. Uh, yeah, everything is changing, and our mind is not changing. Then is very dangerous. Uh, <laughs> that's the kind of idea. Mm, thank you. Any other last questions? Yeah. Um, when you were selecting um, like phrases and from religious texts to use, is there a consistent theme that you were selecting? You know, pieces from the Bible or um, Taoist texts and so on. I have a very good friend, uh, he is a Taoist uh, senior priest uh, and uh, he, his temple very close to my studio uh, and very good friend and he, he likes art a lot uh -huh. and then he say my past life could be a priest too <laughs> and, then, and then I ask him so because I want to write some talisman and I ask him about can you give me some talisman about animals uh, uh, this is actually all about animal text, uh, animal, and he found it, uh, found the books, and he write it down for me, uh, yeah, and then I project it on the wall for dog to eat. Uh. Mm, very irreverent sense of humour, I think, and uh, much in in, in uh, Peng Hongzhi's work. Okay, well, if there's no other questions, um, we might thank Peng Hongzhi and move on to uh, Cindy Ng's work. <laughs> okay, so uh, Cindy Ng is from Macau, born in Macau. She's um, probably geographically most representative of, of this exhibition because she has lived both in uh, Hong Kong, Taipei, and now uh, is living in, in Beijing. She's been there for the last seven years. Um, Cindy um, is largely self-taught, but she spent um, some time in, in London uh, at the uh, this was British Museum studying the Chinese um, collection, yes, which is, of course, a, a wonderful collection that they have. Um, Cindy, like Peng Hongzhi and many of the other artists in this exhibition, doesn't work only in one medium. She works across mediums. And uh, her work is quite cross-disciplinary. She um, works in, uh, with theatre um, as well as uh, music. And uh, she's often created these um, video-based works uh, with musicians. And I think you heard the soundtrack earlier that was created by a Taiwanese musician whom, with whom she collaborated. Um, and she also works with uh, dancers who sometimes uh, respond uh, to her work through improvised dance. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Cindy now for, uh, she's, she's become very, very used over the last few days. We've had quite a few reporters in, so she's become an ex excellent uh, uh, spokesperson for the exhibition and uh, is very eloquent in talking about her work. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Sophie. Okay, um, here we are. <laughs> um, this work has been the first time here, and this was uh, made by 2006. And um, I think the concept, I think uh, Sophie ha already tell us all about the ink idea. And, but interesting me, is uh, I put the ink idea into two different media, papers, um, canvas, uh, working with um, musicians and dancers, and even once 
It's very interesting to me. And uh, I do the live, the, this uh, abstract uh, landscape in a um, artist gathering. The artist gathering is uh, about uh, 30 performance artists. When I do this, and the artists start react. The uh, one, dan one dancer is dancing in front, and one doing the drum, he is playing the drum with the, the video, and someone is singing, and all most of ten artists is interact together with the video. I think this is really interesting to me and very really meaningful to me because art is a communication and uh, influence each other. Yeah, this is my um, experience, and uh, another interesting experience uh, is. Um, <coughs> In Taiwan, in Taipei, I got uh, a uh, occasion is uh, someone is Buddhism and someone is, the, uh, someone is Catholic and seeing the same video. I think this is this one. <laughs> I forgot which. I think this one. And after they seen the video, and then they said, oh, uh, the Buddhism uh, told me that. They said, oh, Cindy, it's just like um, uh, so Zen, so um, imit meditate. Meditate and relax. Uh, it seems that um, make me uh, relax and calm down all the um, feelings. Yeah. And the other um, Catholics saying, that, "Oh my God, it's something like God making the rivers and the skies." And <laughs> this is <laughs> well for me. I I I say I feel I didn't think so much because for me it's um, abstract landscape. Um, actually, I work with them together. Yeah, I, um, for what you see five minutes now, I think I have made this video a month, every day eight hours. So I don't know how much video I make. I think about uh, 40, 40 video. And each video is around 20 minutes. And you will see this is not one take, not uh, computer cutting, uh, not um, editing or whatever whatever, and every video is 20 minutes and make it um, faster in five minutes. So what you see is this five minutes um, uh, video. Okay, um, actually this video has been done around nine years before, and yesterday I'm just like you sitting there and watch this again because I haven't seen, <laughs> I haven't seen it for a long time. And um, this is the milk. The white thing is the milk. And um, when I yesterday when I saw it, oh wow, it's so nice. I have I almost forgot you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, make me think more about what I'm doing now. And um, what is moving? This one is really attracting me. Is something is moving here, but something here a little bit changing. But it's really. Uh, small reaction, but here something like is moving. This is water, and um, long time no see this video. And at this moment, the new work uh, I have tried um, soy sauce and uh, milk, white wine, wet wine, and uh, cola, cola and uh, orange juice, and. Um, why I'm using the daily drinks? Because um, one day, ah, I think this before, one day when I was uh, making video again in my bathtub, <laughs> my family hate me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, I have, a co I have a coffee in the refrigerator for two days already. You cannot drink it. And then, okay, well, you cannot, I cannot drink it. What can I do for you? And I tried to pull to the image, this is the image of a glass. I said, wow, so beautiful, Co uh, coffee, I haven't seen before. So starting with coffee and then milk, all kinds of drinks, what I have ever uh, find in a supermarket and try to mix them all together. And uh, for me, um, the most interesting, or oh, you can try tonight, you can try to mix the soy sauce with um, Milk, or <laughs> <laughs> uh, even when the milk is in a room temperature or frozen or in um, cool 
it's a different texture. And you try, it's very simple, just a dish, and meal is come this size, and the soy sauce come this size, and move the dish, and you'll find something very interesting. And uh, for my imagination, both com both uh, combinations, just like a sunset, or uh, something regarded with the sunshine, yeah. And uh, recently, um, I did, I think I did a meaningful job. <laughs> Um, one of my video uh, will be um, displayed at the hospital in a um, operation room outside, waiting, waiting for the friends or relative when they are suffering at the operation room. And um, I will make a colorful video to make them relax and med meditate. Hope them to hold, uh, hope to help them to forget um, the painness, and this will be at the uh, Taipei in the hospital. And the other uh, part, another thing now, what I'm working uh, will be theater, more paying more attention with dances and music and the video together. Um, I think it will come more um, three dimension, the the feeling. And the other thing is um, trying to learn calligraphy, <laughs> but not by brush. So I hope one day I will show here how the calligraphy without brush will appear. I don't know. <laughs> I'll find the answer. OK, thank you so much. And uh, uh, sorry, one more thing. Thank you, museum. Thank you, uh, director and uh, Sophie. And they make us all together. OK, thank you. I don't think we can let it go so soon. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Michelle. I just um, was wondering if um, you could explain how much of your process is uh, about chance and accidental um, you know, effects of the <laughs> food liquids you bring together for us and, and how, to what extent is it deliberate? Yeah, thank you. Well, wow, it's a very really good question. Okay, with this one, I have made around 40 videos to have one. And uh, it's a very challenging for me to um, make one shot. Okay, around f uh, four years before, because I really want to challenge myself how much I understand and how much I can control it. And uh, starting from five years before, I make it in performance. You know in performance, no cutting, no shot, no, okay, you go and come back. <laughs> and I got to do it and do it in the right time. For example, the performance mainly around 50 minutes. So what you see, moving this and I'm moving this and this. So really controlling what I have done in 15 minutes. Um, of course, I'm afraid and I am so scared. But what I uh, think helping me is some drinks of uh, red wine. <laughs> Liquids. So when I sometimes when I perform, I drink and I pull <laughs> together. Uh, it's very make make me feel more relaxed and doing well. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions, Julie? Thank you, Cindy. Um, I'm really fascinated by your work um, and I'll talk later about improvisational dance but um, I was really curious to hear um, about your work being used in hospitals and um, I'm wondering if you could um, tell us how that came about. Um, the hospital project is a public art, uh, public art project uh, um, within these 10 years in Taiwan, um, every big um, uh, construction or hospital or whatever, they have a kind of uh, percentage of uh, funding must put on public art. Okay, something like um, um, underground, they have sculpture or whatever. And last year, and um, the Thai, the Thai, one Taipei art consultant company um, called me and say that Cindy, uh, is, we could do something like this. 
and uh, would you like to take part? I say, of course, yes. But one thing is no, no black and white. <laughs> because sometimes black and white is too stressful for um, uh, the patients. I said, okay, yes. What about colorful, something like pink, light blue, and uh, purples? I did something like this before, but it's more, um, and, and more fancy way. Yeah. And um, okay, I did that video last week. <laughs> yes, I've tried to finish this yeah, last week, and I really, I have. Uh, usually, I will make uh, uh, a, f a ten pieces. I can select it, but this time I really, um, um, yeah, yeah, uh, pressure, yeah, mm -hmm. pressure myself because this is for patients. Yeah, and I and uh, I because two years before my father was really sick at the hospital and uh, in, in the operation room, and I'm the one who <laughs> sitting there. I really feel this, the stressful of being um, um, waiting, uh, these kinds of hours of waiting. And, uh, and the hospital is so cold. <laughs> I have no, no, um, nothing, nothing there. And I, I so um, I tell myself I do it again. I got to do it again to make all this p um, waiting hope, hopeful, hope, family. yeah, family, and can be relaxed when they are waiting. So okay, I think I got finished one, <laughs> and they like it. Yeah, and uh, and this and the video will show on November coming November. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions at all for Cindy? I think one thing too, um, that uh, just going back to Michelle's earlier question about chance, and I think uh, like Peng Hongzhi, you're quite influenced by uh, Buddhism and Taoism and particularly the idea of impermanence and the idea of change. Would you like to speak a little bit more about that in relation to, to this work? Um, I think um, when I start working with uh, art, I I think the Buddhism uh, uh, philosophy and the uh, Dong Fang Mei Shi um, aesthetic aesthetic is already building very really hard here, and um, and why I like the ink because uh, I think this is related to my born place, Macau. Okay, maybe today you, you will think that, oh, casino place, how <laughs> casino place <laughs> from something like this. Well, that's, the, that's why I'm, I, um, in Macau, this is very complicated place. It's really, you can find something very fancy, but you can find something very uh, cultural, something like because the Portuguese have been there for 100 years, they left some treasure mm -hmm. over there. The part I like Macau is the, the treasures there. I haven't been to a casino. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Friends come here, visit them, I, I go with them. And it's too fancy there. And uh, when I was very really child, I, our school, um, is near the seashore and the old trees and the sky is uh, I'm always standing here my mother told me I'm always standing there looking at the sky she don't know what I'm looking <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually the cloud is make me so many imaginations and I don't know I don't know what it is but until I made the media ink oh I say well I think I find you I find the media that make me think of the cloud, the mixing, the everything. So this is the, I think I got married <laughs> with the ink and um, all these things comes out. That's, that's why I love them so much. Yeah. For me it's ink, for you maybe another thing. Maybe the best way is the soil source. <laughs> Certainly very experimental. Um, any other questions at all for Cindy? 
I should just say to um, we should extend our thanks to the Macau Foundation and also the Taiwan Ministry of Culture, which gave uh, Cindy and Peng Hongju the funding to come here um, uh, to uh, be at the opening and to present at the artist talks. Okay, well, as our third artist here, I would like to welcome uh, Ni Yoyu, who's based in Shanghai. Uh, Ni Yoyu is one of the younger artists in the exhibition, but very much a rising star in China now, whose uh, works um, are increasingly being seen in museums overseas. In fact, he's got a uh, creating a new installation for a work at the um, Brooklyn Art Museum's new Asian wing, which is um, about to install, I think, later this year. Um, Niyo Yu uh, uh, went to art school in Shanghai, um, and um, after art school, as a rather poverty-stricken art student, or, or art graduate, I should say, um, during the GFC, he began creating these rather wonderful coin series. And this is the second uh, it iteration of this series called Galaxy. And he's going to talk a little bit more about the work um, in, a, in a minute. But like uh, the other artists, he does work across a range of media. He's particularly interested in the materiality of, um, of art. So he works, um, he's worked with uh, uh, used furniture, um, he's worked with um, in, in painting as well um, and you can see here these works really do demand a closer inspection too you really do need to get up close uh, to the work because they're, they're little miniature paintings that he's created on each of the coins um, okay well I think we might um, start now um, Julie is going to translate for, for Yoyu Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I can't speak English, so <laughs> this afternoon, Julia can help me. So, can you allow me to sit? So, he might be standing and sitting because he needs to um, operate the videos. So, excuse that. 关于今天在美术馆展出的这一件作品 um, So he's going to start off uh, playing a video recording that he had uh, of this uh, particular piece. So um, it's about the process, and he will be talking about um, his work while he plays this video. Uh,从二零零八年开始,呃,我开始做这个关于硬币的作品。呃,我是二零零七年的时候才从大学里面毕业。呃,那个时候我非常贫穷,一贫如洗。呃,对做艺术的前途感到非常的绝望。um, so this work is, uh, began in 2008. Um, uh, Yo, you graduated in 2017 um, as an undergrad, um, and he, at that time it was a very uh, poor state in life for him. Uh, I想知道以后做艺术怎么办,我去看了一些重要的双年展,然后我看到很多非常好的作品,他们确实用很多的钱堆积出来的大型的装置。在那个时候我就感到特别的绝望，我觉得我没希望了，因为如果在今天做艺术、做做作品，就是必须要用钱的话，我可能再无出头之日。So um at that state he decided he was wondering um what the contemporary art uh society or the future has for him um as a graduate student um so he went to the Shanghai Biennale. 
uh, to see all these great commercialized work, and that he was he felt hopeless in his future because he realized that you needed to invest so much money and labor to be uh, in this type of market. 呃，就在那一次受到刺激之后呢，我突然想到一个问题，就是说，其实，在我的观念里面，呃，艺术跟物质之间没有必然的联系。我觉得很好的历史上很重要的艺术家，他们都并不是靠钱去做作品。呃，所以我突然想到了我小时候的一段经历。呃，在我差不多读小学的时候，那时候我没有太多的零花钱，我父亲。呃，有一天，我将我父亲给我的一块钱硬币用锤子砸掉了，因为我很好奇，作为货币，它为什么能够去商店里面买到好吃的东西？它里面是不是藏着什么秘密 ？So, um, he felt, although he felt hopeless, uh, but in his uh concept of making art, uh, materiality doesn't necessarily always have to link with making art. So um, it also reminded a memory back when he was little, where uh, his father gave him a dollar as a child so he could buy things. But he was curious of what this dollar could do. So he pounded apart, trying to find something inside, and realized there was nothing. So I was sad. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, 所以在二零零八年的时候，我这个儿时的经历唤醒了我，让我觉得我是不是可以直接用钱？既然在今天做很多的艺术都需要花花那么多的钱，我能不能直干脆就直接用钱来做做作品？呃，所以我那时候就开始呃做了第一枚这个 coin。So um taking experience from his childhood memory, he thought. Since making art required so much money to be invested, why not make art out of money? So he took the coin from his pocket and began、um, his new series of artwork. 呃，这个作品，二零零八年大家知道，正好是经济危机的时候，就全世界经济都不景气。然后我我在做这个作品的时候讨论的，呃，从表象意义上讨论的是一个就是关于附加值的问题，呃。钱，它之所以能够消费，是因为在政治，就是国家机器铸造它，使它有这个形状，产生了附加值。Surface value of money is that money could be used only in、uh, a certain context, and、uh, the value of it—it's—it's it's not itself, but the additional value that the money itself possesses. 二零零八年经济危机之后。Oh, and um, yeah, some more details. Yeah, um, so uh, that at that time, especially at that time, it was the economic crisis in two thousand and eight, where all the economies was going down. So it. Uh, stimulated more to think about the value of money. 我用锤子，用一种暴力的方法，一锤一锤的把它的这个附加值抹去，是为了让这个钱币还原成它的物质的本来属性，它就是一块金属。被砸平以后的钱没有了图案，它还原成了一个铜或者铝这种材料，我没办法再去商店买东西。与此相反的，我需要。呃，在这个两厘米的金属片上面控制呼吸，一点一点的去描绘一个新的东西出来。So, um, to focus on this idea, he physically and very in a brutal way pounded out, uh, the money. So it's taking physically taking away its its value, and um, and drawing these miniature drawings on top to add a different. Uh, a different type of value to it, so the money itself becomes just the material, just the metal or the bronze itself, and not the at the original value it was、uh, given. 
，所以从此这个过程其实是更像一个行为艺术，它产它形成了一个从附加值从有到没有，再从没有到有的一个循环的过程，呃，对。So the work, the process itself, became a process of art where the the circulation of the value circulates from taking away the value and adding new value to it. Um, so what you see here um, are pieces of work that he's made out of spare time. Um, and this series, he has made over 500 pieces, which are collected by various museums. Uh, in古代的时候,无论是东方还是西方,对待宇宙都是一种神秘感的这种崇拜。但是在今天,我们这种神秘感已经消失了,崇拜已经不在了,取而代之的可能是物质对物质的依赖,一种新的经济的一种宗教对
Um, so when he draws, he has to control his breath, um, control his hands, because he doesn't draw under a magnifying glass. So, uh, this work attracted me. Uh, although. 呃，我平时其实做很多其他的作品，但是这么多年来，我一直用零碎的时间做这个系列。它吸引我的就是这个作品永远跟我的身体有关，从砸的过程中，包括到画的整个过程都跟身体有关。而且可能我五十岁以后没有办法画这个作品。在呃零八年到现在的这几年里面，我每天不能画太多，我需要保护自己的眼睛。同时，呃，做这个作品。的时候，我会觉得每一年这个硬币在变大，因为我在里面注入的内容会越来越多。So, uh, the main reason that kept attracting him to make this work is the physical process of making. Um, and but it requires a lot of energy to make. So he predicts that probably after when he's fifty, he won't be able to produce this type of work anymore, uh, because it requires a lot of uh, focus. Uh, and because he's so focused on drawing um, and making these with his spare time, he could only make a certain amount uh, a month or a day to protect his eyes. Um, and each year, as he kept creating, he felt that the coins are growing larger, but they're actually not. It's that he's put so much focus into the details that he sees more than um, the actual size. 就像现在大家看到的，差不多已经接近一千倍的放大。对。Um, this is about uh, the size of what you're seeing on the projector is about a thousand times bigger than the actual one. 我再跟大家介绍一些简单的介绍其他的工作。啊 ，so um he's going to introduce a few other uh simple arts that he's uh not simple art but Simply introduce a few other arts that he has made during the past. This is, uh, I from 2011 started to make a fake instrument. It was in everyday life, just to get some old pieces of wood. Then, according to the feeling of the wood, to pull out the edges of the wood with a hammer, a half a inch or a half a inch. All the pulling process is not with real instruments. Um, so this is a piece of artwork he made in 2011. Um, it is an artwork about recording the process where he carves the measurements by feeling, like not rationally, but by his own pers perspective of the length of that ruler and recording the time of how, it's, how the measurements are made. So he would record the time at the end once he finishes um, that ruler that he drew up by himself. Uh, and the rulers are made by old woods, wood, types, different types of wood that um, he, he's gained. 对我来说，做这个作品纯粹是为了打发无聊的时间，因为我一开始觉得全世界人都在用这个厘米、毫米或者英寸这些这些标准。约定俗成的，那我凭什么会大家都用这个标准？然后他，我我希望用我的身体去感受这些标准，所以就做了这样一一批呃尺子的作品，呃，比如说。Yeah. Um, so the work started off by um by trying to trying to use up spare time, uh, but conceptually, uh, he thought that. There are so many different measurements in life that are uh, that are set, you know, like inches, centimeters, um, and he thinks that in you know why he 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 thinks that we should physically uh, engage with the concept of measurements, like physically trying to experience the idea of measuring. So. 呃，一个正常的一米左右的木料，结果刻到最后可能变成了一米一十二这样的这种误差。整个作品就是一个风干了的时间的标本，所以能能够在这个每每一把尺子上面看到我所花费的时间。Um, so 
the measurements aren't the accurate measurements. So for example, if he carved on a meter long um, wood stick, it could probably I end up with 12, an extra 12 centimeters because it was drawn with his perspective. So it's sort of a, uh, so once it's finished, it sort of froze that time of the making and uh, it becomes a artifact of that process. 因为时间的问题，我只能呃一边播放一些作品，然后呃跟大家交流。Yeah. Um. So because of the time, so he'll just be showing you a few pictures of his work, and then um we'll go into discussion. So any questions? Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. My question is about the last work that you showed, the pagodas. And could you say something about the components that, uh, that you construct the pagodas with? This one? Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite pagoda. 呃，从 Kyoto Nara 呃，去找到很多这些过去的手艺工匠雕的莲花，木头的莲花。这些日本有很多这种手艺工匠，从可能爷爷辈或者更早，他们就在做这个家族的事情，一直传到孙子。所以我找到了不同时代的不同的人
贾克，我们买了贾克梅蒂的雕塑，我们把贾克梅蒂的作品丢掉，最后留下他的展台。我们把很多贾克梅蒂的展台叠在一起，会发现其实也很酷。So uh, most of his um, artwork focus on things that are not actually seen with the eye. You don't you see it, but you don't um, realize the importance of it. Um, so, for example, if you bought the famous sculpture Jack, Mitty, yeah, and you know if you bought all of his sculpture and threw his sculpture away and just kept the 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 plinth or the base of it and make an artwork out of that. He thinks that would be a lot more interesting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to go back to the galaxy work, which I find very beautiful and mysterious. But I just wanted to ask a bit about a bit more about the intent behind its creation. In some cultures, to deface a coin is a bit like defacing a national flag. It's an inherently subversive act because you're damaging or altering something that has national significance. So I just wanted to ask whether um, the artist was intentionally um, creating a, a subver or engaging in a subversive act, not just altering metal into a different form. It's a good, good questions. This work is in many places is a very small depth of meaning. But I think as an artist, my work is almost, as a Chinese artist, I almost never talk about political issues. But I think if it's a good work, it will be very complex behind the text. 呃，我可能是一种比较任性的方式，或者说是主观的方式选择去破坏了它，但是并没有想在里面讨论它。但是事实上，这种问题同样存在，就是因为我探讨了一个附加值，而且我是用一种暴力的方式去摧毁了这个附加值。但是相反的，我却用了一种非常温和的方式去重新建立我认为的艺术或者是理想的附加值。Um, he says that uh, the idea of um, you know defacing the coin and the national power and things was not uh, exactly intentional in the beginning uh, because for him it was just a, a, a way of making art but when you really do uh, go through this process. And if you connect it with his um, work of art, the idea, it somehow correlates together. Um, he doesn't, so in his artwork, he doesn't really talk about much about um, these, you know, nationalism or any other type of political issues. But um, his work has been seen in different places that do have that little, um, Sen political sensitivity, like a little spark there. Um, but he thinks that because he focused on adding the, the, the aesthetic value to it, uh, it makes it a little bit not as um, provoking. Um, but if you're talking about additional value, you know, brutally taking away, defacing the coin, and adding um, aesthetic, aesthetic value to it, it does correlate with that sort of um, idea, you know, especially if he's an artist from China. But um, so I think what he's saying is that it, it's a very complex text behind the work, but the intention sort of gradually combines together a little bit. Yeah. 而且事实上我还蛮享受这种一点点小的犯规这种。过界的感觉，就好比当我砸一枚钱币砸得太薄了，它边缘
薄到像刀片一样的锋利，曾经还划伤过我自己的手，所以这种感觉我觉得都很有意思。作为艺术家，有的时候我们会会会很享受这种这种犯规。Yeah. Um, he enjoys the idea of being a little bit naughty as well.、Um, so, like sometimes when he pounds out the the coin, like really thin. So thin that the edges become sharp and accidentally, you know, pierce him. But it's it's sort of that a little bit of excitement there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Another question, in, and this question has two parts.、Um, the first part is: is this every time you install this piece here, is it the same, or is it different? And the second part is, if it is different, who does the installation? 就是第一个是他永远作品是都一样的嘛，放在这方式。然后第二个是说，呃，是你本人安装的，还是说如果不是是是谁？然后怎么安装的？啊 ，Thank you。呃，这个作品通常情况下是我自己安装，然后它是根据美术馆的空间决定怎么排列。呃，通常我会选择呃去 Star Map 上面找一些星座，然后根据这个星座去排列。如果数量太少，我会根据其他情况去随机应变。Okay, um, so it depends on the scale of the wall of the museum that's available to him. Um, so he would go look for um look on a Star Map or a, a certain arrangement that would fit. Um, this piece for him,、um, and he usually installs it by himself.、Uh, and how many? Uh, if 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 But、um, if he can't, because he can't always be there, so if he can't, he would make a very accurate map, sketch out a very accurate map、uh, for the museum to put up this piece. Yeah. In fact, we will be putting that into practice, Nigel, as the exhibition is touring to Bendigo and Sydney and Brisbane.、Um, I'm not sure if Yoyu will be able to come to every venue, so <laughs> maybe a slightly different constellation next time.、Um, does anyone? We might have time for one quick question. If anyone has any pressing questions, otherwise、uh, Yoyu will be here for the next.、Um, Probably fifteen, twenty minutes or so before we go off and look at some kangaroos. <laughs>、um, okay, so no, no last pressing question.、Um, I would like to、um, say too that,、um, as Shane mentioned earlier, there will be、uh, a, pro a series of.、Um, Of further talks and workshops、uh, held in conjunction with this exhibition,、um, and we do have two artists in residence、um, coming here in late July and during August to work with students at the School of Art, and、uh, they'll no doubt be、uh, asked to give、uh, talks about their work as well.、Um, their works by Yare Jong, who's become known as the Biro artist. And、uh, Hungang,、uh, whose、uh, work you you encounter when you first come into the exhibition.、Um, okay. Well, with that, we are running a little bit over time, I think. So,、um, I'd like to、uh, ask you to thank the artists very much for their time and talks today. <laughs>